We're building rivers, bitches! So you've watched us do a 60 liter resin table. You've watched us put 5,000 bullet casings into a table with resin. And this might be the most ridiculous because we're building a 26 foot long river table bar top. Let's go. All right, so these guys make mead and they got a ridiculous size bar. They bought their own slabs, which is a little different than how we normally work. So we're pretty excited. All we gotta do is pick these things up and we're gonna make some, make some river tables. I'm back from vacation, well rested. Got a nice tan, played some golf, drinks, yada, yada, yada. So we got flat in like a zillion slabs. I come back and there's just slabs everywhere. These slabs are a little over nine feet. So me and Sam off camera, we put another support piece in there so that the machine's completely flat. And then we're gonna do two at a time and then uh, skim them down using this fly cutter wheel. I think this one. Yeah, it's from Whiteside. It's a Whiteside bit. We got it from Bits and Bits. Check them out. And we're gonna use Miss Piggy. It's gonna be a long week for Miss Piggy and I, me. So yeah, glad to get back together with her and spend some dusty days together. It's gonna be real dusty. Hello. Welcome back to another episode of the John Malaki YouTube channel. We are doing a couple color samples here for the epoxy for the river tables. So we have a couple different copper colors. We gotta do a black and then we're gonna do a blue. This is just a regular total boat epoxy, just as a sample. I haven't found too much, if any, color variation between the different brands of epoxy. We'll use a more river table specific epoxy for the real thing. But for now, a little bit of that, a little bang. You know, she bang. It's amazing. Oh, you need just barely any with this stuff. That big blue river table, we used this color one a couple years ago, and I don't even think we used a whole one of these. Yeah. It's time to make some melamine molds. Got the slabs flattened at least kind of close to where they need to be. We have some rough dimensions on how big these tables are gonna be. So it's time to cut some melamine. So because this is, I think, the longest thing we've ever poured, we went ahead and ordered 10 foot sheets of melamine. So, we can make two 10 foot sides, and then we'll make an insert for the center with some branding on it. But always call your provider to see how long they have stuff instead of getting too squirrely trying to make stuff longer than what it is. Because these normally come in eights. This thing's bare. Fire up! Here's some tips for your molds. One, use melamine. Or HDPVEP, the plastic stuff that's insanely expensive. There's a plastic sword shortage right now or we would probably own that on this project. Tip number two, mold release and caulking. We use uh, caulking in all of our corners to make sure everything is water and airtight. The biggest tip with the caulking and stuff is to make sure you let it dry. We always like find ourselves in, we're building a mold and then trying to pour the same day and caulking is never dry and it always turns into a problem. Another tip here. So check this out. The finished size of this table itself is gonna be um, 30 inches by eight feet. So this box is 31 inches by eight feet, one inch. Wow. What that does is it allows us to cut our ends off when we get it done. I'm gonna keep things a lot cleaner. Another thing you wanna do is, Sam already dropped this down in here and traced the outside of this sapwood. That way, we can run a bead of silicone down here and create a sort of like a suction airtight barrier so the slab doesn't get too much epoxy underneath it and doesn't float up. So the next reason you wanna outline your river is so you can put down some sheathing tape. Just just stick it down, Jordan. Don't show me to get the wall. Well, damn it, Jordan. The sheathing tape is because the, the resin won't stick to it. Also, sometimes the epoxy gets really warm and it ends up melting the melamine. And we've run into that a few times in the past. This sheathing tape is not cheap. But you make the money back in the time you save on demolding your, your piece. Jordan, put your phone down. Finish this. Go, 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 go. Hand off. Nope, gotta come back. That beat's gonna suck. Mm hmm. Are you left handed? Hammer dextrous. Didn't look like it. 
tilt it up, slide it in the pocket first, and then slide it down. Ready? So, um, the client bought the slabs on this job, and uh, this one is a potato chip, as well as this one. So, we're gonna cut them in half for the forms, and then kind of gauge uh, how flat they are, if we can run them through the planer, uh, or if we can just make them work in the forms. Now, the way we like to have our slabs, slab pad, how did I buy a thousand pack of pencils and then we don't have any? Okay, kind of find the middle here on both sides. Come pretty freaking close to that. And then we grab a chalk box and we chuck ourselves a line down the middle. It kind of makes sure that the slab is semi-centered. So like this one has a big belly here, but that's not gonna matter really, because that's you know kind of what the whole spiel with the river table is. Now, if Jordan could grab two soft horses, we will this sucker in half. Nothing about these is square. gets on camera, he acts like the most miserable human on the planet. He'll go from being like chipper and smiley to you're like, Jordan, what are you doing? He's like, I'm gonna fuck you so That's literally what you do every time. And then Your face John. just turns to sadness. And then I'm like, John, what are you doing? And I'm like, ha <laughs> ha, we're building rivers, bitches! What's up, everybody? I have to be more chipper, apparently. So the caulking is dry, these have been sitting overnight, and what you see here is typically we just clamp our boards down into the molds so they don't float. When we get wider, we make a jig and stuff, but what we needed to do here was add these metal stretchers. That way everything is nice and straight. Because these forms are so long, the epoxy is actually heavy enough to bend the form. So we wanted to mitigate that by putting something straight on them. And as well as these are basically potato chips that we put into the form. And because we couldn't plane them on both sides because we want to keep as thick as possible, it's just helping everything to stay nice and straight. So it's a little hack to keep things nice and flat. So I did some calculations. Um, if you want to know how I go about doing uh, my volume estimations, I think that's in a video, or we have some tips for river table video. We need about seven gallons per, which is 14 gallons total. And then we're also doing two other tables for the same client, uh, 28 gallons in total, which is this entire cart. For this project, we're going with river table epoxies, deep pour epoxy resin. Um, great product, we've used it in the past on a few other projects and we really enjoy working with it. Um, it's three to one, so you can see they got a black cap here. This is your hardener, this is your resin. This row, one bucket, this row, one bucket, this row, one bucket. We did the volume that way that we know how much we need total overall. So with that, then we also weighed and measured the pigment we're adding per each bucket and it should give us a nice uniform look across all four of the parts. Ton of resin, lots that could get screwed up. Let's get squirrely. All right, kids, so we're going with co cobalt blue on the tint, and uh, we got this, this is like a coffee scoop. It, uh, it works, we just need uniform, and this should look pretty much exactly like we want it. Woo, let's do it. Let us pour. Remember, 
when 25 minutes ago my time, like two weeks ago your time, posted on Instagram and was like, I don't think it's gonna leak. Yeah. Real fast before we continue, I'm gonna tell you guys how you can win a Ram 1500 TRX and $20,000 cash. What? Who wrote this? But in all serious, we're super excited to partner up with Omaze again to bring you guys this killer opportunity. You can donate in support of a really good cause, Team Rubicon. Now, if you haven't heard, Team Rubicon is a uh, veteran-led disaster response organization that mobilizes veterans, first responders, and civilian volunteers to help communities after disasters, um, during like situations like the pandemic this last ridiculous year, and during humanitarian crises, crises, crises. We thoroughly enjoy the veteran community, so we're super excited to be able to support this cause and bring in guys this opportunity. Now, if you don't know what the Ram TRX 1500 is, it's literally Sam's dream truck. He is in tears right now because we can't enter to win it. The truck has 700 plus horsepower and the Hellcat V8, it's literally the fastest truck on the market right now which is super cool. And not to mention, there's $20,000 to go with it. So if you wanna enter for a chance to win, all you gotta do is go to the link in my description or type in omaze.com forward slash Maleki. It's my last name. And use the link there to get yourself an opportunity for such a ridiculously awesome prize. Now, speaking of ridiculously awesome, I apologize, but I gotta get back to what I cannot even begin to think is going to be even more absurd. So between the two rivers on the bar top, we're gonna to do the company's logo. And that means we need to glue up some more of these slabs. So we're gonna cut this one down, rip it on the table saw, and then get a little glue up going. This is not what's supposed to be happening. There's smoke coming off of the rivers. Uh, everything was perfect. It's only like 60 something degrees in here, I thought, no? Maybe? I don't, oh my God. Damn it, Jordan! What do we do? We pop bubbles? I'm like, for Jordan! I got everything. Now, hurry, 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 hurry. Everything is on fire. Oh no. Bye. The ambient temperature in the room got too hot. It's like we're like on the cusp. These things are only supposed to be poured like 74. It's gotta be getting closer to 80 in here. If it dries too fast, it'll crack. And we can't have that. If it does if it just dries fast and it hardens and doesn't crack, it's not ideal, but we could we'll survive. I can't even say David Jordan on this one because it was 100% not his fault. I could have changed the temperature. Like, that's my bad, guys. Sorry. You could have uh, Jordan on it us and let us know better. Damn than me. Ever. Well, it's time for everyone's favorite game. Be the first one into the shop and see if the epoxy exploded or leaked all over the floor. Uh, as you guys saw in the previous clip, it was boiling itself as uh, we left. So, let's see. Wow. It didn't explode. Holy shit. I don't think it should be rock hard yet, but it's all alive. It survived, it looks great. Yes! Jordan's working on flattening the black tables back in the CNC room. I'm gonna start unmolding these blue ones. They, uh, they started steaming and gurgling and doing all sorts of horrible things on Thursday or Friday of last week. It's now Tuesday. We were scared to take them out of the mold even though they were rock hard, so I don't know what to expect, but I really, really hope that these things aren't just peanut butter and jelly on the inside. All right, let's try it. Sorry to interrupt your montage. The noise this made was way too satisfying, so. The other one, it, it came off so, 
it couldn't have been better. This, the complete opposite. It's slightly blue, which is concerning that it like soaked through somehow. This side doesn't look like soft at all. I'm gonna draw this. Come apart, you. Uh, How about one of us lifts one pole? Three, two, one. Oh, Why don't we get the bear that's upstairs? John! It's like a whole different world in there. I'll go down there, Dad. Could have gone better. Could have gone worse. All right, kiddos, so we're all dry. He's gotta get this thing out of clamps, and then we're gonna cut it to size, and then Jordan's gonna make her look real pretty for the CNC. Okay, so now, it's time to cut King Mead's logo into the center portion of the bar. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, five, or a half inch pocket cut with the crown, you can see here. And then they also want an inch border around it. Uh, so it's gonna look something kinda like that. Using the bits and bits, half inch down cut spiral bit with Astro coating, love bits and bits. Uh, we have a code, I think it will be in the description, Maleki 10 I believe it is, or Maleki 15, not sure. Check it in the description, Get save some money. Use bits and bits. We're gonna go without the dust shoe so you guys can see some cutting, so. I'm, I'm scared, this bit is like very scary looking. Fire her up. cowboy making noise in the background but one of the parts you haven't seen in this project is we've got 10 tabletops that we've already pre-made that are all getting a copper logo to match the center of the bar so we've got to pour all of these we're gonna pour them all at once just make it a little bit easier and it's because they're all the same color so we're gonna mix up some more resin we're gonna do some more pour Okay, my children, so, ooh, we're dry. And Jordan and Sam got these out of the bolts. So they called me in, glitter, are we flipping it over? No, I was just sliding it. Was the other side? This is the bottom. But isn't, I mean, aren't we gonna go through the same thing we just did? My guess is it's the side that was in the mold. Miss Piggy's much more efficient at flattening slabs than myself and Sam and our biceps and our lack of uh, breathing apparatus. So we're gonna use her. The CNC Cowboy didn't show up today, and Jordan's back. So we're gonna have to deal with him. Let's go! sweltering in here, so excuse the fan. But next phase on this is we need to join the three pieces together. We're gonna to use these fancy domino connectors, get these inset, we already have it laid out, do a little plunge plunge, make a dunge dunge, and then um, get, be able to mock this thing up, kind of see what it's looking like, final sanding and finish. Making moves, let's go.
Now that the holes are cut, we stick them in there. We can go ahead and mock this thing up. Just wiping off the last little bit of dust just because I thought everything, it's terrible. But big tables are finally ready. I'm not even sure how long we spent sanding these, but I feel like it's all I've done this week and last week and my whole life. All that to say, let us spray. All right, so we're back at the installation spot at Kingview, and uh, the uh, construction crew's here ripping through getting the bar installed. We're gonna get our bar in. Sam just got here with the gorgeous looking tabletops and stuff. Uh, let's get this thing in. Ready? Install day! You ready to party? Hell yeah, is there mead? You know what, there is. And there's also this thing in the sky and the Jordan. So it should be a good one. Let's get it. So in standard fashion here, we can't read or write. Therefore, I mismeasured the length of the bar. We're gonna have to redo the middle insert. Um, we gotta go rebuild this and then bring it back and then we'll wrap this thing up. Damn it, John. Damn it, John. I finally have something I think that's actually gonna work. Thanks to Jordan. Damn it, John. Let's get this thing in. And that's gonna be a wrap on this one. If Yins would like to visit Kingview, I'll have a link down in the description. Uh, they're not open yet, but they will be soon. Uh, and you can pop in, check out all the stuff we've built here and uh, have yourself some delicious uh, alcoholic treats. And if you wanna see more insane epoxy projects, I got a whole playlist right here for you.